I watched the horror movie that's traumatizing everyone on TikTok right now. Skinamarink is a brand new horror movie about two kids who wake up. Watch the brand new horror movie that's scaring the sh out of everybody on TikTok. 2022's Skinamarink is the scariest movie I've never finished, and I'm gonna tell you why. Before we start off, I want to say that this movie is not going to be for everyone. A lot of people are going to find it pretentious, annoying, slow, dull, hard to understand. And if you ask me, it kind of is a little bit of all of that. Oh boy. I love those types of movies. The ones that are actively fighting against you, enjoying them. Oh, I kid. Also, I'm sick for this video, so excuse my immune system and my sweating due to feverish tendencies for this one. Thank you. TikTok seems to have this bi-monthly fear-mongering circle jerk whenever a new horror movie is released. It's always this guy who goes fucking viral. He's wearing a hat and he says something like, Okay, guys, this might be the one. No, I've watched Hereditary and Insidious. Trust me, I've been there. But this movie made me shit my ass. This month's movie is apparently Skinamarink, a Canadian horror film that's not even out anywhere. But it's being talked about. Skinamarink. I didn't get the title either until I said it out loud a few times. Skinamarink a dink a dink. Skinamarink a do. Fun little twist on an innocent childhood song. How devious. Now then, few things. Number one, holy shit this movie. I went into it blind, that was a mistake. Just by the cover and the four seconds I was shown in the TikTok that I saw, I thought I was gonna get like a paranormal activity and I instead got the Mandela catalog. I have very limited knowledge regarding analog horror, but this movie seems very inspired by it. In fact, I'm like 99% sure that just that's just what it is. Just watch the trailer online, it's pretty fucking good because I didn't even like watching that. Every shot is bizarre. We are in one house, and we see it from 902 different angles. There's a staticky, grainy filter over the entire movie, accompanied by staticky, grainy sound. You know the sound you hear the first couple seconds you have a vinyl on? That? A little popping, scratching? That's the movie. Not this part, that's an actual score. There is none of that in this movie. This movie very much succeeds when the viewer is self-destructive, meaning the movie wants you to let your imagination run free. Now then, I'm gonna talk freely about this movie, spoilers included. If you don't wanna be spoiled, click off now, I understand. If you don't wanna watch this movie or just never will, stick along, we'll have some fun. You can hit peery eyes with a blindfold You can shoot down hackers with no rifle Bad actors online get stifled You can do it no matter where you might go So you can pull up Home for the holidays, pulled up In any random public place and suit up NordVPN save the day Keep the haters raids away And watch invaders fade away like Kuzma Plenty servers, many countries to connect from I love good fellas, Netflix, Belgium, 30 day money pack guarantee compels them. When they need a deal, I just turn around and tell them. Go to nordvpn.com slash MrGG for a two year plan at a huge discount, plus four additional months for free. That's nordvpn.com slash MrGG, the link's below. And thank you, Nord, for sponsoring this video. Now let's cut to the chase. Did this movie scare me? Play the clip. Oh. <laughs> oh gee. Absolutely not. That was being nice. Now the movie doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But then again, I don't think a lot of analog horror does either. Things are vague, things are mysterious. The viewer is forced to be attentive to try and understand the unfathomable, but is simultaneously punished for being too dialed in. Now is someone later gonna come out with a nine things you missed in skin, skin of a rink video? Yes, and they will point out valuable clues that I missed that will clear up a lot of questions that I have. But will everything have a concept Concrete answer? Absolutely not. There is no way. There are two kids, Kevin and Kaylee, in a house. Kevin and Kaylee are looking for their dad and they can't find him. Things are disappearing in the house. And I don't mean toys. I mean like their toilet. I mean windows and doors are disappearing. They are locked in this house. And soon after the electricity stops working as well. And then only tomfoolery ensues. Did I mention this movie's dark as hell? Add in all that grain and you really can't see much. But then again, 
not much is shown. Although there is hella dark hallways and slivers of doors that we're forced to stare at. It's not fun, is it? Remember, your mind loves to play tricks on you. Sometimes when you stare at darkness long enough, you start to make things out in the darkness that aren't actually there. This movie very much preys on that. But yes, there are jump scares in the movie. Didn't mean to scare you just now. Hey, what's up, guys? Although I could probably count the amount of jump scares on one hand. Maybe there were six. They're a bit obnoxious, but I think that's only because they're loud as shit and nothing else is. The kids are whispering. There are cartoons playing for a large portion of the movie, but that's still pretty minimal. And the only other sound we get is the royalty-free folly. Foley. And while we're on sound, I hate the voices. They're also a bit muddied up to fit with the aesthetic, but sometimes we'll hear a voice that's about like an arm's length away, which is pretty average in a movie. But then other times, you'll hear a voice then just silently bellow right into your ear. And I hate it. It's almost like a mini jump scare. I think headphones are pretty, I wouldn't say necessary for this movie, but I would personally very much recommend them for your watch. I also don't think I would have wanted to watch this in a theater or even with someone else. I think watching this alone in a dark room was very much the move. But before I do move on from the voices, I do have one small complaint. Sometimes there are subtitles that the movie puts in because maybe some something's like kind of hard to understand and it really helps you out. And I initially elected to have no close caption on during the movie, but as I came to realize, not every line was subtitled in the movie. So there was some lines that I heard that were just too muddied up or the four-year-old didn't have the best pronunciation. So I wanted to rewind because I was like, well, I don't know what the hell they just Said. And I normally wouldn't care just turning on closed caption, but it kind of interferes with the experience, I'll be honest. So Kevin and Kaylee wonder where their parents are, wonder why no one has come for them. And the very first scene that started to get me in the block the screen mode was a scene where Kaylee goes up to a bedroom, then she sees her dad sitting down facing away from her. But we know, according to dialogue, that he's not there. And then he tells her to look under the bed. And she does it. He tells her to do that twice. She does it twice. Only to arise and then see her mother sitting on the opposite side of the bed. And her mother says, we love you. Someone's here. This movie purposefully does not show you anyone's face. So the only moment of peace you get with anything on screen is the cartoons that the kids are watching. And then they start to use those against you. Having them randomly pause, randomly loop. This is what you hear for the majority of the movie. So you just start associating it with all the bad shit anyways. The story gets a bit darker as we realize at one point that Kaylee's gone. But shortly after when Kevin is lured downstairs by something, we find her. And while watching this movie, I randomly propped up my phone to see if I could maybe catch a reaction or two and uh I caught this one <laughs> jesus christ she had no eyes and no mouth whatever it is took that away from her because she was not listening she just wanted her parents kevin on the other hand is willing to be a bit more obedient even when it comes to extremes as he's forced to stab his own eye with a knife and he does it that's not good. Did I mention he's four? The last 20 minutes or so are the monster luring Kevin into this. I don't even know. I'm not gonna pretend I know what the hell's happening at this point. He's in this evil abyss. We're seeing a whole heap of shit at this point. All of a sudden he's on the ceiling. He's moving further and further away from the room. There's text on screen that says 572 days with the toys behind it. I assume that's how long they've been trapped in this house, but who knows? We get more unsettling scenes. There's a slideshow of children with their head missing. Not in a gruesome way, YouTube. They're just photoshopped out. Still not letting us see a face. We also get this odd repeated shot of blood splattering, some kid yelling, and this monster growling. And it's repeated multiple times, and I don't like it at all. We also see some imagery of a house and a door and a type of abyss, perhaps illustrating the otherworldly acts at play here, the status of the situation, or maybe the futility of it all. And at the very end of the movie, the camera slowly pans over in darkness as it has many a time. Let your imagination do you in. But that's not how this one goes. The movie decides to throw the final pitch and instead you start to see an outline of what appears to be a woman's face at the very end. It stares back at you for a very long time. 
Oh no! Fuck you! Oh no! 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 I'm not looking. Fuck you! Fuck you! Stop! Why are you still on screen? I'm not blocking it. I just have my hand here. This is just my protectant, just in case it jumps through the screen. Oh my god, I can't even look at it. I can't. I can't stare at it for more than like a couple seconds. My hands get warm as shit. Okay, thank god. My hand is greasy, son. <laughs> and that's the end of the movie. I, for one, was relieved to see an outro screen because frankly, I was fucking sick and tired of it at that point. For context, this movie was written and directed by Kyle Edward Ball. This is his feature directorial debut and it was made with a micro budget of a micro budget. It is absolutely not for everybody. I can picture a handful of people in my life that would not only turn this off in the first 15 minutes, but then also insult me for recommending it to him. And I wouldn't even really blame them. This is out there. And if you're not even familiar with analog horror, I think it's tougher for you to get on board. I wanna reiterate, you don't know what the fuck is happening for a lot of it. And it is a slow trot to the end. Now, after turning it off, I was a bit on edge, starting to pay attention to every little sound I heard, even though I already know all the little creaks and crevices of this house. And I kept imagining that something was watching me from wherever darkness lied. Even now, this is the same night that I watched the film, and I'm going to sleep with my dogs, and I'm going to keep some lights on. And that isn't me just gassing up this film, it's me just telling you this is the feeling I had afterwards. I'm creeped out. As far as the pretentious claims, yeah. I feel like with this type of experimental film, it kind of comes with the territory. Like funny enough, I thought of two movies while watching this one. I thought of Antrim and Begotten. Two other movies I've reviewed that I would 100% call pretentious as hell. And I don't like those movies, but I I, th I think I like this one. It's weird to say I like this movie, but then if I were to say I don't like it, I don't agree with that sentiment. But regardless, yeah, it can be pretentious, but I was never rolling my eyes through the film. I was a thousand percent doing that with Begotten and Antrim. The discussion surrounding this movie might also take a bit to gather because as of now, the movie's not out anywhere. It's not for purchase, not for streaming, but I think when it finally hits some sort of distribution, there will be another wave of discussion that will hit social media. You can bet on it. It is a tough, long watch, and I will never rewatch it, except through others' future reviews. But I will 100% purchase it when it's possible to support the director. I also do want to quickly add on to that after sitting on this for a bit. The movie is set to release in 2023, and there will be another inevitable wave of buzz. But I do urge you all, including myself, to actively show your support when that distribution is set to director, writer, Kyle Edward Ball and Skinnamarink. I know I said I wouldn't rewatch it, but I will revisit it in one way or another when the time comes for that reason alone. Anyways, sleep tight. Hey, what's up guys? If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Here is your second reminder to please leave a like. Please subscribe because I have more content coming your way. Shout out to my beautiful, lovely patrons for always supporting the boy. The merch is still available for some reason. <laughs> In viz.tv slash chapter one, we got black and maroon pieces. Hope you all had a good holiday. And as always, oh fuck. Well, I just ran out of space on my card. Scout, put some grainy darkness here. Then, uh, d just pretend I'm in the darkness, guys. And as always, I am Mr. GG. And I am out. <sighs>